Thanksgiving, y'all. So today I am going to do a quick recipe video. Um, I just wanted to wish you and your families a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, for me, I'm not cooking at my house today. We're all going over to my mom's. We're gonna have a great time, but we are making dessert. We're gonna take a pumpkin roll with us. So I thought it would be fun for you guys to just make this recipe along with me. As you can see on the counter behind me, I've already made two, so hopefully I can't mess this one up. <laughs> Um, we're gonna make number three right now and we'll just have a little fun doing it. So let's get started. All right, so a must for every Thanksgiving meal, I don't know about your all's traditions, is to have some stretchy pants on. So today I'm going with the hillbilly looking overalls because I wanna be comfy when we eat. <laughs> I would love to hear about some of your all's traditions in the comments. Um, we can talk through those while we bake. So I'm gonna start by mixing my dry ingredients. This recipe is actually pretty simple when it comes to this part. Um, so you wanna have a mixing bowl and then I have a separate one in my mixer, the stand mixer for the wet ingredients. So I'm gonna start with 3 fourths cup of flour and I will go with an age old tip that my mammy gave me. She's my grandmother, she's passed away now and I just enjoy remembering her and baking for the holidays. Um, but that is always to level off your measuring cup with a flat edge of your knife. So I scoop out my three-fourths cup flour, bring it closer to show you guys, and then I'm going to level it out so you have that perfectly even cup. So we're going to do, this is a fourth cup, so I'm going to do three of these. And just put it right into your pan. And then another thing I've done is I've actually written all the recipe on my fridge. I like having all of that written out so that while I'm doing the recipe, I'm not trying to fool with uh, a recipe book pages or scroll through my phone while my hands are dirty. Um, and I can just look over at my fridge. So if you see me glancing over there, I'm just making sure I've got it right. Okay, three fourths cup flour. Next is just your baking soda and your baking powder. It's a half teaspoon of each of those. So, Again, I'm gonna scoop it out and I'm gonna use my level, my knife, to level it. So this is my, made a big mess there. <laughs> this is my baking powder, one half teaspoon. My baking soda, one half teaspoon. And I will link this recipe down below. I'll also have it on my blog in the recipe section. So you can go there for all the details, but there it is. I also am pulling this recipe from the actual Libby's Pumpkin website, um, except I've adapted the spices a little bit because they call for clove. I did not have clove. So here's my adaptation. They want like cinnamon, clove, they, they separate them. So I had a whole thing of this pumpkin pie spice from Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons of this in substitute because most of us probably don't have clove sitting around in our kitchens. Maybe you do. Maybe you bake a lot. I don't know. So two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Leveling that one off is a little bit more messy. Making a big old mess behind the bowl here. <laughs> and then our second one. Whoop. And it smells already. It smells so good. So this pumpkin pie spice already has clove in it. It has um, cinnamon, ginger, lemon peel, nutmeg, cloves, and cardamom. So this makes your house smell like fall. It's just amazing smell. Um, and then the other thing is I actually really like cinnamon. So I added extra cinnamon above and beyond this. I added a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. So I have this big thing of it from Sam's Club because we actually go through it a lot in our family. And I had just had to go buy a new one because we add it to like oatmeal, tea, everything. <laughs> so a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. And the last ingredient for the dry is a fourth teaspoon of salt. So super simple, just a few things. I'm using uh, the pink sea salt, ground Himalayan pink salt, also from Sam's Club. We love this stuff, we go through it. All right, and then you can actually see there's not a lot in my giant mixing bowl. <laughs> It'll look like not a lot of dry ingredients. When I first started doing this, I thought, is there something wrong there? can see I'm just gonna mix it all in with a whisk spices and all and I'm gonna set this to the side let's go work on our wet ingredients so I probably should have said before we began that you should preheat your oven to 375 so if you haven't done that yet go ahead and do that now 
<laughs> so that it's ready to go um, while you're doing this part. So this part, again, is not very difficult. In a mixer, so I'm gonna use my stand mixer here, you are doing three eggs, a cup of sugar, and a two thirds cup of pumpkin. So I bought these giant ones from Sam's Club because I love making all things pumpkin right now. And I've already made two whole pumpkin rolls. And I mean, we're not even to the bottom of this one. So one can will be fine if you're making one pumpkin roll. You might even be able to get two out of one can, a smaller can. Um, or if you wanna make a bunch of these all at once, get yourself a big one and just, I just keep, I leave my little measuring cup in there and I just keep scooping it out as I need it. So let's go ahead and add our stuff to the mixer. Back our eggs in here. Just crack them right on the side. Try not to get the yolk, maybe more on the inside. And if you drop a shell in or something, so what? Pull it out. <laughs> it's okay. We're all not, you know, perfect. All right, three eggs in the pan. And then I'm gonna go wash my hands because I've got egg yolk on them. All right, now for our cup of sugar. I am using cane sugar from Sam's Club. So you can see it's a little bit of like a thicker texture. Like you can see the little granules of the sugar. Um, this is fine, or if you have regular sugar, that's fine too. I feel like this sugar, sugar. I know people are like, oh, this is a little better for you. It's still sugar, but whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put a cup of this in. The key is when you have these bigger texture sugars, you just need to mix it really well so it can dissolve. So I'm gonna put this in here. And I'm actually, let's see, I'm kinda getting near the end here. We're gonna need a refill. Gonna get out a good cup. There we go, beautiful cup. Dump that sugar in. And then I'm gonna turn on the mixer on the low. Oops. And on a one, and I'm gonna just let it like blend with the three eggs, uh, maybe for like two minutes, a little less. Um, you don't want it to turn into a meringue or anything. I just wanna froth it all up. And why it does that, or why that's a good thing, is when you pour this in the pan, you're putting air bubbles into it that will make your pumpkin roll part taste more like cake, um, more of that you know airy mixture. So here we go. That cheese. That cheese. So I had a little helper join me. <laughs> My girls love to bake with me. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this texture real quick. Hopefully I won't make a huge mess. Let's see. We won't eat that. Yeah, we should probably put a bowl under it. We won't eat that. No, don't eat that. Don't lick that yet. <laughs> Not a good idea to lick it yet. All right, let's show them how it looks. Let's put the bowl right here in case it drips. Okay. So I kind of frost mine until it's got like a little bit of air bubbles, but you don't want it to be getting thick, okay? This is just three eggs and the sugar. Notice that sugar is completely dissolved. Now I'm gonna add my two thirds cup of pumpkin. Just swap this back under. <laughs> Are y'all waiting around to lick something? Yeah. <laughs> well, how about once it's all done, we'll get it set up. All right, so I'm scooping out my one third cup and then I'm gonna, I've got my knife in here too. It's already messy um, from the last one. I'm just gonna level that off and then use my knife to kind of scoop it out into the bowl. Doesn't that look yummy? Yeah. <laughs> it does. It, and doesn't it smell so good in our house right now? Yeah. All this pumpkin. Mmm. Are you all gonna get dressed? Cause we're going to Titi's later to have Thanksgiving dinner. My dress. You are dressed. It's Sissy still in PJs. Say, I can relate to that, staying in PJs on Thanksgiving. All right, so we have I'm put- I'm Titi's with my dummies on. Oh, you know what? That's a good point. She's going to grandma, she can wear pajamas. All right, we're gonna now blend the pumpkin into this. And then while it's blending, I've got my bowl of my dry ingredients and we're gonna mix that in slowly till it makes it just a lovely orange pumpkin color. All right, girls, you gotta back up, back up onto the chair so that we can uh, pour this in, okay? Let's mix in the pumpkin. Uh oh, are you okay, Eden? 
down the sides so all of the dry mixture is mixed in. All right, let me grab that Evelyn from you. It's going to help the mixture along. Pour it in the pan. Uh, for this part, you will need a jelly roll pan. Uh, if you use a sheet pan or something bigger, it might, I don't know, be too thin or it might burn. It's possible. I think there's adapted recipes out there for it, but I happen to have one. It's 10 inches by 15 inches is the typical jelly roll. And it has kind of that thin edge, so it will make almost like a very flat cake that we're going to be rolling up. Um, I put parchment down on this. You're going to want to do that so it'll come out really easy. And then I also spray my parchment with Pam. Uh, I remember for a while watching the Nailed It show on Netflix with my kids. And that was the one thing they said over and over again is you can't have too much Pam. So I'm going to spray this. You hear my girls playing in the background. No cooking happens alone in this house. It's all, it's a group effort. All right, so now I have my mixture. Look how beautiful that looks. And I'm gonna dump that on this pan. Just pour it out. I'm just gonna kind of do an even pour, but uh, I will shake the pan to settle it. So what are some things you guys are thankful for this Thanksgiving? I'm definitely thankful for my family, my children, even though uh, they can be very demanding of my time. <laughs> and uh, right now I'm definitely sleep deprived from the baby, but I am so blessed with uh, the family that I have. And we are also really blessed that we have both sets of parents um, on my husband's side and mine that live in town. Um, and we're actually attending both Thanksgivings today. And my mother-in-law is amazing. She said, I know you're going to your mom's first. I know you're going to have a big meal. You don't have to eat it twice. Okay. <laughs> She's like, there will be food for you here if you want to, but you don't have to eat it twice. Just come and visit with us. All right. So I have it all in the pan. I'm going to um, shake it around. Probably just, I might even use my spatula to kind of spread it first. And then I'll shake it to make it nice and flat so you guys can see here. But again, I use that parchment paper, sprayed Pam on it to keep it nice and greased, I guess is what you'd call it. All right, you're gonna shake it until it's just absolutely flat and even across the pan. I'm gonna pop this in my oven. My oven cooks it at exactly 10 minutes. It's perfect at that point watch your oven yours may cook hotter or cooler than mine um you really just want to cook it just till the middle is set once it's set go for it all right and then pull it right out so we're going to put this in for 10 minutes and then while that's cooking we're going to make the filling so this is the cream cheese and uh, powdered sugar and there's a couple more ingredients I'll tell you about uh, filling that's gonna go inside the pumpkin roll so let's do that so one quick tip I wanted to mention um, that I said the other day in my recipe video is that when you're making any kind of spaghetti or marinara sauce you can use your leftover pumpkin in that so I'm actually gonna scoop what's left in this jar I don't want to bake anymore today I'm done after this um, I'm gonna just save it in this in the fridge and when we have another spaghetti night, I'm just gonna add the pumpkin into the marinara sauce. I like to put it in the crock pot with some meatballs, add a little bit of extra Italian seasoning, and this stuff is extra nutrition and delicious, and you can't even, you can't even tell that you're eating it. So that's what you can do with it. Guys, so it just, uh, the timer went off in the oven. I'm gonna pull it out. I'll show you guys what it looks like. And when you pull it out, not long after you pull it out, it's got to go right onto parchment um, with some powdered sugar sprinkled on it. We're going to roll it. So I'll show you how to do that. Ooh, that one's coming out. 
hot. It looks perfect, right at 10 minutes. You can see it's kind of set in the middle. So I'm gonna set this on the oven right there to cool for a second, turn off my oven. And then what I've done is I've got another sheet of parchment paper on the counter and I'm just gonna sprinkle powdered sugar on this. This is gonna be the outside of the roll. So just a little bit to kind of cover it. I'm just gonna kind of spread that out with my hands. And then we are gonna flip the roll out of the pan onto this. Okay, so I'm gonna wash off my hands because they have powdered sugar all over them. Just give them a quick rinse. And then I'm gonna use my hot gloves. It takes a little bit of aim and practice, but you'll get good at it. Grab the pan. And this is why putting that parchment underneath of this helps so much because it'll flip right out. So I'm just gonna kind of line it up with this. And I'm gonna flip. Woo, that was perfect. It landed right on my parchment. Um, and then you peel off the parchment that was on your pan. And now we're gonna, and if it's, you know, not correctly positioned, you can try and scoot it, but just be careful not to rip your roll. Um, then I'm gonna slide this around now, Got the parchment, and I am going to roll this up. Uh, you don't want to like scrunch it or roll it too tight. You want to keep the, the uh, bounce in your cake. Also, the goal is to try and not crack it. Mine started to crack, so I'm going to just, just very carefully tuck that in. But if you wait too long till it's too cooled off, um, it'll crack. So you've got to kind of get it rolled while it's hot and fresh out of that oven. Okay, so it is a little hot there. You just kind of got to use your hot gloves or something. Uh, and now mine has a great roll to it. I'll show you guys. So rolled up, this is what it looks like. It does not have the filling yet. And we're going to leave this to cool for quite some time. My other ones have been cooling for about 30 minutes. Plus I put them in the fridge. Those are the ones I'm going to pull out to put the filling on. Um, so let's make the filling. The filling is not super complicated, not a ton of ingredients. Um, the big thing is letting stuff soften at room temperature. So you're gonna have one block of cream cheese. It's basically one package. I'm just using the Aldi's brand. So nothing fancy, just one of these. You're gonna plop that in your mixer. I'm actually gonna use, uh, well, mine plopped right out because it was room temperature. But you can use a knife or something to get it along. You need six tablespoons of butter softened. So that is not quite a whole stick of butter. Um, it's Mine has the tablespoons marked on it, so I just kind of cut where six is, and I'm gonna drop the six part into the bowl. Okay, and then you need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm gonna add that, and then one cup of powdered sugar. And then what you'll do is you're going to blend all of this together until it's soft. Uh oh, I think I hear the baby, so <laughs> I'll just speed up. Um, you're going to blend this together. I'm going to grab my powdered sugar. And then you're actually going to let this mixture cool a little bit in the fridge because if it's too warm um, or too runny, it, it'll melt out the sides. And you want, the key here is let everything cool. Let this cool, let that cool. <laughs> and then you've got your nice pumpkin roll. All right, so let's get our cup of powdered sugar. I'm actually just gonna turn it and sprinkle it this way. Okay, and I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna grab my mixing blades and we're good to go. Make sure to scrape down the sides as you blend this gonna make this really nice consistency of a filling. I'm kind of pushing it back towards the mixer petals. It's gonna be really thick, okay? You don't want this runny or watery. I mean, it's like an icing. In true Thanksgiving fashion, I had to have a little taste of this icing and it is so delicious. So this is what's gonna go in the middle of our roll. Um, I have two rolls from earlier that I already made and chilled. Um, like I said, let these chill for a long time. You don't want anything melting. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna demonstrate on the very first one I baked, um, cause it would definitely be cool by now. 
So the reason you roll it while it's hot is so it has that shape, it's ready to go. You're gonna unroll it to put the icing in, but then it should roll back up without cracking um, really easily for you. So I'm just gonna gently unroll this. And because the parchment paper was in between, oh, I mean, it looks beautiful. It just rolls right out. So I'm just gonna kind of peel back that first layer and we're gonna put all this icing inside of it and then just spread it out. So we'll just put the big old chunk. I'm gonna use my spatula to spread it out. And then ideally with pumpkin roll, once you've done this and then you roll it back up, you wanna let it chill in the fridge um, for as long as possible, a couple hours maybe before serving because it helps the slices and all of it to just harden um, so that you can cut nice, neat slices. All right, so I'm gonna just spread this out like icing on a cake. You don't wanna go too far up to the edges because uh, it'll start squirting out your roll. So we want it nice and neat. I'm gonna tuck it in that little flap there. And it looks like a lot of icing, but I mean, when you spread it out, it really, is what the amount you need. This is just lovely. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to try these. And the whole house smells so good. All right, we're gonna put some extra in that tightest part of the roll there. And you can see the jelly roll pan is really the size you need because if you were using anything bigger, like a sheet pan, you'd have a ginormous like pumpkin roll. I don't think, I don't know, may not be a bad thing, but it's the size you want. Okay, I think I've got a nice even spread. I kind of go near the edges, but not all the way. And now I'm gonna roll this back up. Let your kids lick the delicious frosting with the rest. I'm gonna rinse this off. Roll. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn this, let y'all see this delicious goodness. Okay, and I'm just gonna carefully roll this thing back up. And this time, I should say, you leave the parchment off, obviously. You don't roll that in between the layers. You're just gonna just roll it. And there's kind of, the so the powdered sugar you sprinkle there is leaving, it leaves like a glaze on the top of the roll. Um, and then what, right before you're ready to serve, you can sprinkle more on top. Um, you don't wanna do that too early because it gets absorbed into the pumpkin roll. So it'll look really pretty right before serving to just give a dusting of powdered sugar. Um, but I wanna hold this up for you guys to see. Look at that delicious cream cheese filling, pumpkin roll. And once this is set in the fridge and you slice it, you're gonna have these beautiful slices. And this is just utter fall deliciousness. And for the finishing touches, just a little bit of powdered sugar. And of course the chef's gotta try a slice. I mean, goodness, we have to make this pumpkin roll even, right? <laughs> Let's cut that off. Look how pretty the spiral is. So I hope you guys have enjoyed baking with me on this lovely Thanksgiving day, or if it's no longer Thanksgiving when you're watching this, I hope you had a great time with family and friends. Of course, we have to try this. Let's see how it turned out. Oh my goodness. Mmm. This is like the best thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> it is so good, you guys. The cream cheese filling the outer cake part, that pumpkin pie spice had the perfect amount. I know I'm talking with my mouth full, but it's just that good. So that being said, thank you guys for joining me on Life and Lilacs. Have fun making whatever desserts you do today, pumpkin rolls, any of it. And I'll see you guys next time.